Hello everybody, today is Friday, September the 22nd, and I'm currently standing on 1472 um, conce uh, Concession 2 uh, by Copetown, Ontario. On this side of me is a lovely golf course, and in the background uh, work is being done to do the uh, clearing of the land to put the replacement for Enbridge Line 10 high pressure oil pipeline and um, on this particular road I noticed that there's a very interesting storage area um, it's obviously designed to block the view of the public um, for but for what purpose I don't know um, the particular structure that they've devised here contains a lot of heavy machinery um, I've counted two different dump trucks uh, behind there, there's also a cat uh, kind of digging device back there. And they also appear to have a device used to do uh, underground pipes. So if you were rooting a pipe underneath the ground with borehole, that's the kind of device that they have at that end. And it may be um, what they're doing here to protect the aesthetic of the land, the topography of it, because it's a golf course and it's pricey to replace, basically. Um, what I wanted to uh, also go over is the, this is all uh, SNC Laval and signage. I wasn't aware of the logo uh, the last time I videotaped along this route, but now I know that is SNC Lavalin. Uh, it says only SNC Lavalin uh, people are authorized to go at that location. That's fine. Okay, so um, I'll tell you what happened yesterday because... Uh, I did produce a couple of videos. I'm keeping a couple of them private because those were the videotapes I took of my discussion with the Hamilton police. And I had concerns with um, how the events took place yesterday and I'll explain that to you. Okay, so basically um, I was a delegate of the Enbridge Line 10 pipeline hearings. And among the concerns I had were the lack of critical habitat protection for federally protected and provincially protected species, including the Jefferson salamander. We know that along the Line 10 route, there are confirmed Jefferson salamanders, brown bats, there are uh, western chorus frogs and other species at risk. And the National Energy Board ruling, uh, which was given at the beginning of 2017 for the Enbridge Line 10 uh, pipeline uh, changes uh, basically stated that there was no critical habitat mapping completed along this route. So we have that verified by the National Energy Board itself and yet within months of that ruling we have significant construction taking place in these areas. So there is no compliance to the Ontario Endangered Species Act nor is there compliance to the Species at Risk Act as far as I can see. So what I did was um, I wanted to also uh, have input when the water taking permit came regarding these areas. So I, I put an alert on the Environmental Bill of Rights Registry to notify me of any water taking permits that Enbridge was seeking so I could have input regarding the salamander risk. The Environmental Bill of Rights is a, a policy whose preamble basically states that it is designed for meaningful public input and to facilitate a more transparent planning process and allow the public a say. And the problem with that was that when the Environmental Bill of Rights Registry listing for these water taking permits came out, there was no clarity as to what Enbridge pipeline it involved, nor was there in any layman's terms the description of where these permits were being uh, applied for. They, 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 they were very cryptic in the location of it. So there was a number to call on the Environmental Bill of Rights Registry, which I did, and it was to the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change in Ontario. And when I asked them for details about this particular water taking permit, uh, they said they didn't have any on their server. They had no information whatsoever even though the Environmental Bill of Rights Registry confirmed the fact that they already issued permits. Um, take note behind me that there is a dump truck leaving this site right now. And that's important, and I'll raise that concern in a minute. 
I'll just uh, keep quiet while this vehicle goes by. Okay, now, the reason why I'm concerned about seeing dump trucks in regards to this project is because I am seeing significant land augmentation taking place to the south and I wonder if aggregates are being sold as a way to offset the cost of the pipe. Uh, the reason why that's such a, a grave concern in my view is that uh, this is over top the Galt Paris Moraine system and we have lush corn fields, farm fields, there's a corn field right beside these areas. Corn fields actually exist all along this route and uh, that, that means that there's significant water and um, when they're digging up the area of this pipe, they're hitting sand and they're hitting clay. So the work that they're doing may impair the water budget of the Gulf Paris Marine system. It may affect the water budget of the adjacent farmlands. Um, they might have issue with uh, regards to the drainage to tiles uh, that are placed along the farm fields. Um, Enbridge stated that they would dig under tiles to avoid damage to them, but there are areas of this pipe adjacent to cornfields that are just being dug up. Um, the totality of the width from one end of the hydro corridor to the other is being cleared in some sections that have pure sand. And I have grave concern to that because they are regrading these areas and that may have an adverse impact on the adjacent properties in terms of their well systems, the way that the drainage is for their fields, it could result in property damage, etc. Um, I'm very concerned about that. Um, if you're doing a gravel pit operation in Ontario, you need a permit for that kind of thing and it has to go through the Environmental Bill of Rights for public comment. And uh, there's no such process to exist in regards to this particular job uh, in terms of the removal of aggregate. Um, so that, that's something. I mean, there's two ways you can get gravel. You can get it by digging, uh, digging down into the dirt and removing it or you could do it by leveling the hills, the hummocky hills of the Waterloo Moraine as you do pipes like this. And for some reason, the government of Ontario doesn't treat dirt equally. Uh, the risks are the same, though, so I would like to see more regard for the, the impacts to water. Um, just prior to the National Energy Board hearing regarding Line 10, um, I raised concern that the right-of-way of the existing Line 10 at that point was in close proximity to several oil and gas lines uh, running side-by-side side within feet of each other. And then not long after, uh, Enbridge announced that they're going to use a hydro corridor to reroute the pipe instead. So they basically altered the route within just weeks of the National Energy Board hearing. And uh, they negated public input because they said, well, since it's in the hydro corridor properties, we don't need to really have a public open house or anything like that. So there was no public open house for the reroute. Um, it just happened rather quickly, and it offset a lot of the registered delegates who thought it was going through the old route. But um, it didn't give time for the, the people affected by the new route to really be informed. Um, so what we're seeing here right now is construction work being done with a new route that wasn't even a new route uh, less than a year ago. <laughs> like, I mean, well, it's based, that's not the way to phrase that. Uh, the rerouting took place within this year. Basically, there hasn't been a full year cycle uh, since the time that they announced the new route to today. And the construction work is happening today. So we don't even have a 12-month creek study. We don't have 12-month hydrogeological data to reflect the delta levels of spring thaw to the winter cycles because they have rushed this project through. The permit was issued early 2017. It's September 22nd and they're already doing the job. They are using heavy machinery around the actual water stakes that they're doing the testing. So we're not even having a good pre-development data. We can't plan remediation, we can't plan mitigation if they haven't even got a full year cycle of what the hydrology is. They are literally using heavy machinery around those stakes right now and I'll take you to an area where I can prove this. So I'm really concerned because this affects the farmlands, this affects property owners, it affects wells, it affects municipal water systems, it affects their potential for growth, it affects a lot of things. And to add to the grief that I personally have, there is a valley system that goes from here to Lake Ontario and it's a geological valley that starts from Cope Town and spreads open like a tear duct of an eye into Lake Ontario. 
So if there's a spill at this point, you're looking at potential contamination of where the water intake for Hamilton is and other communities. And that's a concern I have, okay? Because when I went to the National Energy Board process, they had less than 10% of the engineering work completed, and that was admitted by Dillon and Associates and um, uh, uh, CHM2 Hill, who was the other uh, firm involved. Both of those firms exhibited a lack of regard for Ontario policy. Both of them were at the National Energy Board hearing, and concerns were raised in regards to Ontario's no net loss to water, uh, to wetland policies. And when the NEB chair asked the team, are you aware that Ontario has a no net loss to wetland policy? The staff said no. Uh, these are the engineering staff hired by Enbridge for, to justify this pipe. And I have that because I took minutes at those meetings. Another law that they apparently seem to be naive to is the Endangered Species Act in Ontario. Uh, like I said, there's been absolutely no critical habitat mapping done for Jefferson salamander. And the reason why I personally raise that concern is because for the last, oh, 17 years, I have been lobbying for water source protection law to protect the primary recharge for the Waterloo Moraine. I initiated an Environmental Bill of Rights uh, review for a review on that, and it was paired with the Galt Paris Marine Review. So I have intimate knowledge of the risks of the geology of this area. Um, what you're dealing with here in terms of the geological risks is we have karst systems, which are basically empty caverns of dissolved limestone underneath these pipes and underneath the Westover Station. And that's verified by the um, Ontario geological uh, researchers that we have at the provincial level. Okay. In fact, if you look at the, the actual uh, Westover uh, oil terminal, you will see that the karst is directly under it. Uh, karst exists all along this route. We have all kinds of kettle pond features located along this route of Enbridge Line 10 that have formed where the limestone has been dissolved and the ground just simply collapses and forms these uh, surface pond features. And that's where the salamanders are often located. The Jefferson salamander is a unique animal because it doesn't have lungs. It relies on a very moist habitat to survive. They breathe through their skin. So when we have significant alteration of terrain, it can alter the hydrogeology that is supporting the life system of these animals. It could affect their diet. It could affect their ability to even breathe if it gets too dry, if the hydrology has changed. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm really livid because these animals are protecting our own municipal water supplies. They protect our ability to grow with those water supplies. They protect the farmlands dependent on those water supplies. They protect the actual recharges that are sending water to the wells that the Source Water Protection Act does not protect. Currently, Ontario's Source Water Protection Act protects wellheads and it protects the immediate areas around those wellheads in increments of two hour infiltration, four hour infiltration, and so on. But these zones are located sometimes miles away from the wells, but they actually are the ones gathering the rainwater, sending it through valley systems towards our municipal well systems. And the, the safeguard of those areas is the salamander. Salamanders exist where there's primary recharge. So if you don't wanna screw up your water supply, keep those animals where they are, okay? and what we're seeing here is pipelines being installed in the habitat of these animals, okay? I'm in the area, the general area, of where I know these creatures are based on the data that we have of the distribution. And I'm going to take you to a location to show you just how much this area is being disturbed. 